Well done for braving it in the hostile weather out there. We're glad that you're here to worship. A uh, couple of announcements before we begin. We are celebrating uh, Joe Clark coming with us for the first time in person. <laughs> to help us uh, in our worship uh, through music and helping to guide and lead our choir. Uh, if you watched the video from last week, she actually played. And uh, Dr. Bergen also joined in. It was a lovely harp and piano duet, so we're very thankful for them. And uh, just to accent our music as we move forward. Wonderful, wonderful things happening. And then the other uh, on honorable mention, I'd like to also give thanks for, uh, for Molly Hilton and her crew of folks who helped decorate for Advent. You see we have new bows. Um, she's rolling in right now uh, with John Henry, so uh, thank you, Molly. <laughs> um, and uh, without further ado, I invite, you all have seen, I invite the carols to come forward. They're going to lead us in our opening uh, Advent devotional, which again, on those videos you've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks, those prayers that we begin uh, worship with. So I give that to the Carol family. Okay. candle of peace. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ who is born in Bethlehem will come again to, to fulfill all of God's promises and bring everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. Uh, she sang a song that began with the words, The soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope and peace and love grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him, there will be everlasting joy on earth. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of one born in Bethlehem, Jesus, your son. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn. O come, O come, Emmanuel, verses 1 and 7.
truth are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up to the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a rope of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I, yesterday, watched the worst movie I've ever watched in my entire life. And you know how when someone uh, get, gets something to eat and it tastes horrible, and they say, here, try this, to get other people to say, you know, this really is horrible? Um, <laughs> don't watch this movie. <laughs> okay, but in reality, I, I truly mean that, you know, don't watch it. You don't need to waste your time with this movie, um, because it, you know, if you need to fall asleep, it's something you can watch. The movie, maybe some of you have seen it. I hope you don't like it too much. It's not your favorite movie. It's called um, The Computer Wears Tennis Shoes. <laughs> Has anyone seen this movie? <laughs> one, two, all right. There was one person at the, at the eight o'clock and he said he saw it at the movie theaters. This is a B Disney movie. You know, the, the lower class level echelon Disney, Disney movies that if they had made if they had made this movie in the 90s or in the thousands, they would have gone straight to VHS. Um, but this was actually in the theaters. Uh, and for those of you who love Kurt Russell, you, he was like 17 or something like that. So you might enjoy. That might be a reason for some of y'all who like that sort of thing to watch this movie. So he was a young man. Anyway, the point of this movie, or the, 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 the story, because if you haven't watched it by now, it's not really a spoiler, is... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, he goes to this uh, nowhere, Nowheresville um, college, and he's not the brightest crayon in the box. You know, he's a good kid, but not not the smartest student, let's say. And uh, but he he likes the technology professor, 
and the professor is trying to get a computer for the university. They, that, this is back in the 60s when computers were all the rage and filled up an entire room. And they were able to acquire a computer from a local businessman who had gotten the computer from NASA. So it's a hand-me-down, hand-me-down. So they get this computer and they're setting it all up and they discover that there's one module that's burnt out. And so Dexter, the Kurt Russell character, decides I'd like to help and he's got to drive an hour away out of town to go get this module. And so he goes and picks that up and um, it's raining cats and dogs, not too much like it has today. It's raining cats and dogs and he gets there back in the middle of the night and he decides he's gonna insert the module into the computer and fix it for everyone. And so he gets it inserted in there and he grabs the power cords and it's been raining all night and for some reason in this room, there's water on the floor. So, so he gets the two ends of the power and he's standing in water and of course you know what will happen, lightning strikes and rather than being uh, uh, electrocuted and dying, uh, he stands there shaking and glowing for uh, several minutes while all of the time the data is being downloaded into his brain. So he becomes this whiz kid. And uh, the, you know, the timing's perfect because the academic decathlon is on its way. And so the university is excited to have him. At the same time, there are other universities competing for him because they want to win the academic decathlon and uh, get $100,000 for their, for their program. At the same time, the original owner of the computer, who is, he's, he's a, a well-liked person in the community that gives money a lot to different uh, university and charitable things, but he's also kind of a, a bookie kind of guy. So he's also running these gambling rings along the side. He had been using the computer to help him do this stuff. All of these folks are now that this guy has become brilliant are starting to clamor for his attention. And he becomes popular and he starts traveling all over the country. Uh, the, 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 uh, the people who want him for gambling are gonna use him to predict horse races and which probability of what numbers are gonna pop up in certain things. So he has become a very marketable person and they want them, they want him for himself. And at one point he goes with the gangsters to a casino and there's a raid and he gets caught in the raid and ends up in jail. And uh, while he's in jail, the fellow that he's there with, that's the other gangster, uh, is talking about how wonderful he is and how they can really make fortunes by going out and uh, using his brain for this activity. And at the same time, he's hearing these college professors or, or uh, deans trying to recruit him for this program. And he starts, it's really great because he comes to this epiphany, not at the end of the movie, but kind of halfway to two thirds into the movie, that they're just using him for what they can get out of him. And he realizes this while he's in jail. And at some point, the guard comes and lets him out and says, they've made bail for you. And he goes and he pokes his head out the door and he looks and all of his college buddies are there. And they have pulled, he had a hundred dollar bail and they had $97 and some change. And they were pulling that money together to pull him out of jail. And these have been some people that he had kind of snubbed because he was becoming very popular. It's like, I don't have time for you guys right now. I'm pulled in all these different directions. But here he has the epiphany and a sense of joy in the midst of all of this struggle and term, uh, turmoil um, and, and, and what could be appear as a worldly blessing of becoming wealthy and popular and all of those types of things. Here he discovers that his closest friends who he have snubbed have pulled together their meager resources and uh, come up, came up with $97 the, the, the guard there at the police station says, I'll give you all the extra $2 and change if y'all will just leave, okay? <laughs> so he has this wonderful epiphany, uh, an understanding of what's important. It's a transition that, that takes place. And he's, if you think about this, I, I, I liken this to what we're experiencing in the Advent season. What we're experiencing and what we're meant to experience uh, really relates to the pregnancy of the Virgin Mary and the, the struggles that a person can go through, a woman, a, a, 
a woman or a family, what they go through. Both blessings and struggles through the act uh, of pregnancy. Uh, and here we have this great example in the calendar. The, the wreath is actually a calendar marking time through the drudgery of, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, please come to us. Please come. This pleading with God, we want you to come. Please, we need you to come because things have been tough. Th things have sometimes been tragic. Things have been hard. We need you to be with us. In fact, Advent used to be much longer of a season, and it was more penitential than really it was spoken that it is now today. It used to be seven to eight weeks long in the medieval age. So we get through all of these purple candles leading up to the rose candle. The rose candle today is Gaudete uh, Sunday, which is the word is a Latin word, which means to rejoice. It was a reprieve in this midst of drudgery, of reflecting on sad things and hard things to remember that there is joy. And doesn't that happen for many people? That happens in pregnancy and a new life. We go through the pains of birth and there are moments where it's just, you're ready for this thing to pop out and then you remember how wonderful that feeling might be or will be. But it's, it's very much a metaphor for how we struggle through life, but in particular, the season of Advent. So what is that? How, how did I apply that to my life this week? Uh, so you may have known last week I, I took some days off and I was going to ride my bicycle, which it's been several weeks. I actually did ride uh, last month, but it's been several weeks since I've ridden, ridden my bicycle. And what happens when you don't ride your bicycle for a while and you decide to go on long trips is you have to reacclimate to the saddle. It hurts. It's painful. Um, and, and not only that, it's not just the saddle, but it's also the vibration. If you're not, um, even if you're on streets, but, but I like to ride on trails and paths and stuff like that, the vibration, it, it also engages your, your chest and your arms and all that stuff, and it starts to make your body ache. Well, I, just, I just committed last week to riding every day um, at some extended rides. And uh, so I went up to Somerville at the, at the uh, state park, and I was out on this trail, and I was enjoying it, but there were some ups and downs at first, and, and th there's that tightness in the body, and you can feel that uh, not really releasing, that tightness not really releasing right away, and then the pain of sitting in that saddle for hours and hours uh, starts going on, and the, you know, the whole rubbing together of your legs and stuff like that, all of those things contribute to discomfort to, you know, just to, you know, why am I doing this? Why, why am I beating myself up uh, physically to do this? And, you know, there's, but, there's, but there's beautiful scenery all around. There's dough in the morning, just kind of going through the fog. And, uh, and as you pass along, you can see where the wild pigs have been rooting. And you're thinking, boy, I hope I don't see any of those today. And you keep going. And, uh, get halfway down the trail when you wanted to go all the way down the trail and you decide okay that's enough for today now I have to go back and so you turn back and right as you're turning back there's those pigs and you're glad that you have your bear spray your mace and your boat horn just in case you need to scare them off y'all do carry those things right bear spray mace and a boat horn you need those things um, so on the way back, you're like, God, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? When do I get to rest? I'm beating up my body. So that was day one. <laughs> then day two, I was hurting so bad. I said, I'm not going to go to a state park. I'm going to go to uh, just right around town. So I did, and I found as many downhills in town as I could. But most of the time, you have to go uphill before you can go downhill. Who knew? Um, <laughs> And it was a very short ride on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, uh, you know, we're in the middle of a lot of state parks, not very far of a drive. So I decided to go to one I hadn't been in forever, ever, uh, Saint, uh, not St. Saint Stephen, uh, Stephen F. Austin State Park, which is in Sealy. And I got out on those trails and it was awesome. It was flat, uh, not a lot of vibration, smooth. There was a couple of ups and downs. It was really nice. Um, 
And I got that joy. It was wonderful because it was the third ride. And I remember reading in some of the blogs that I read about uh, bicycle touring, you get through this third day. It's almost like clockwork. The third day, there is this threshold you have to break through that your body is now catching up to where you want it to be, where your mind is. And I was experience, experiencing that joy and just really enjoying this bicycle ride. And then when I'm about three hours, or not three hours, when I'm about three miles away from the car, I'm like, I'm having such a good time, I'm gonna just have a nice, peaceful ride back. Right when I had that thought, the gears, uh, or the crank in my pedals locked up, it froze. And I'm thinking, I don't wanna walk back three miles. I rode, and that's nice and simple on a flat surface. And right in that moment, you can feel the joy that rejoicing of having such a wonderful time trying to be stolen away from you. And you have to make a mental decision, a mental decision to not let that joy be stolen away from you. To say, you know what? It's been such a great ride. If I have to walk back, I'll walk back. I'll just do it at the pace that I feel like. You have to make a mental decision. And that happens all the time in little ways. We make mental decisions to restore the joy that Christ has given us. Happened to me yesterday, too. Things were going great. Then I had a tense text message exchange. And then I had to come back and say, ah, let's recapture the joy. And so we did. It happens in little ways. Listen to what the psalmist says. All of this is preemptive on a struggle that the people of God went through. They were going through some turmoil, some upheaval, where their nation was being lost. Sin was breaking down their society. And they say, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy as God is coming and promising to bless them. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Every bit of turmoil and struggle in God's plan is going to be followed by his joy. But there's part of what we have a responsibility to do. And that's what Paul is talking about in 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always. He's saying make a mental decision to rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. These are things that we can do in order to restore joy. Give thanks in all circumstances, in all circumstances. When the bike breaks down, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you sense your joy being taken away from the outside, the devil, the outside pressures, or the devil himself, remember the promise of God that he has sent his son Jesus Christ for us to have a joy filled life a life of blessing peace hope joy and reclaim that In the full assurance of the truth of God's word, let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, for Stephen and Carol, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For Milton, John, Greg, and Donald, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the city of Brenham, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those on our prayer list and those whom we mention aloud. For our military, especially Miles, JJ, Zachary, Jonathan, Florida, Eric, Trent, Randall, and Alyssa. For those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Steve Schultz, Richard Stadelman, Catherine Booth, Denise Clark, Jody Clough, Jeff Terrell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Bill Anger, and for all who departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all anger, violence and oppression and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, Without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Peter, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To, to thee, O Lord, Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you, everyone. So, as we move along in, in worship, I want to give you all a heads up. We have very, um, we are very expectant. Our work upstairs in the in the main church is really progressed along. Has really progress, progressed along. We fully expect to be uh, worshiping there on Christmas Eve. So please do pay attention to our email uh, information communications. Uh, the um, the last major portion to go back in there is the pews. So. Um, you know, even if the pews weren't in there, we could bring our soccer chairs, you know, but I expect that they'll be there too. Um, so, uh, very excited about that. And so again, just watch your communications and, um, please do remember that as we're progressing along, if, if you want to talk with somebody after church, just go toward the uh, carport, um, sidewalks there and, and uh, try to get out of the, out of the building and you can converse. Um, uh, uh. Cornelia and I will be bringing bread to you wherever you are for communion, so just stay put as we do. And uh, I'll be on this side today, and she'll be on this side today. So uh, please be um, mindful of us not stepping on your toes. Okay, very good. Uh, walk in love as Christ. Oh, birthdays, birthday. Do we have birthdays lo- uh, present? Jeff Terrell? Oh, just sorry. And the people present online. If you'd like to stand or do you stay seated, that's good either way. Are you, you're, you're also there. I'm on the first, but we weren't. <laughs> we weren't together. Okay, good. So uh, you either can stay in place or, and I'll bless you from afar. Okay, thank you. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them if discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him, of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior
Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
job on the, the ringing the bell. Uh, you know, winning the beating the Gators because uh, you know, along with our victory, along with the Aggie victory, that helps push the Gators back a little farther behind us. So there was there was a lot of you know brotherly love there. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. I know. <laughs> it's been a tough season. Yes. Huh? Her classroom? No, she's at the front of the. She's still up there. I gotta call Brenda Squire. Here. Okay. Cool beans.